Hi everyone, Luca from lgmphotography.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be talking about the Bernizer method. Now just to give you a bit more information, the Bernizer method has been invented by Ryan Bernizer, which I will put a link down below so you can go and have a look at his site and his work is a very very talented wedding photographer in New York so please just go and have a look at what he does, it's uh, quite impressive. Now, so what is the Brenizer method? The Brenizer method is a method where you stitch photographs. So that's not new. That's something that uh, landscape photographers have been doing for a while, for panoramas especially. Uh, but this is very kind of different way to do it. And uh, what I'm going to do is just show you a few pictures now of what it is, what I've done with it. And uh, if you like it, please keep watching the video so you can understand how it's done and uh, how you can do it yourself. Cheers. Okay, so now that you've seen the picture that you can do with this method, I'm going to talk about the equipment you need. First thing you need is a DSLR. Now, this can be a Nikon, Canon, Sony, Pentax, pretty much any DSLR would do. Uh, the important thing is obviously have a manual setting, but especially being able to lock your autofocus and exposure. I'll get onto this uh, later on today. Now, the second thing is obviously a lens, but no any lens. Now, you can just go into trying to get that method with a 24 millimeter fix uh, you pretty much are uh, guaranteed to fail uh, i've not tried it personally but i would recommend something with a bit of a telephoto range i personally use the sigma 85 millimeter 1.4 uh, amazing lens very good optical quality very fast auto focus another lens i can recommend which i've used before is the samyang 85 millimeter 1.4 which is very cheap uh, quite easy to pick up for around 200 to 300 pounds or dollars. Uh, well, obviously the Nikon 85G, but that's a uh, different price range. But you can also use the 70 to 200, which is a lens more commonly used uh, and which will work very well. So yeah, that is pretty much all you need to uh, get it done. You can obviously, at the later stage, once you've kind of master it, use uh, lighting into it, which I start to use it as well. Uh, but you can really, really uh, play with this method and bring different pieces of equipment and modifier to make it better. Okay, so now you've got your camera, you've got your lens together. It's obviously time to get uh, some pictures taken. Uh, but before you th do this, I would recommend you find a place like a forest where you get trees. And the reason why I come here to do this video is just to show you that each of these trees could actually be your subject. I would not really recommend that you try this uh, during a job. Uh, rather, uh, you practice uh, in a place where you can be uh, alone, taking your time, uh, nothing to rush you. Practice, practice, and then once you nail it, take it out on the job because uh, you don't really want to be promising some picture to your clients. And then, uh, when after uh, after you finish the job, they ask you for it, and you can't even deliver it because they're not looking right. Uh, so yeah, community, plenty of them to use. They don't talk much, they don't move much, so it's perfect. Uh, so, right, the other thing you're gonna need to do is have your setting right. Uh, now I use uh, a D700 here, and I use it on 1.4, so the widest aperture you can use. Uh, obviously, it's a fixed focal length, so I can't move this. I'll give it 85, which is perfect. The other thing you want to do is have <coughs> your AEL, AFL set up to lock your focus and exposure. That is very, very important that you get it right. Uh, because if you don't, your exposure is going to be different between the shots and pulling it together later may be a problem. You may have picture look a bit darker than the other ones. Anyway, just make sure you get it right. Uh, shooting wall for sure uh, will give you a better quality picture but also more control over the white balance because your white balance will need to be the exact same uh, across all the pictures which is something you can do uh, later on we'll go back into it later on I set it up on single shot ISO 
pretty much ice, so it, it doesn't really matter the, depending on the condition. Obviously, over here, nice and bright, I would go for two to 400, make sure I get all my picture nice and sharp. <clears throat> depending on your camera, obviously on the D700, you can push it, it's no problem. Uh, and that is pretty much it for the settings. So let's move on to taking the pictures now. <clears throat> Right, so you've got everything pretty much ready now, and it's time to get a picture done. So, uh, turn the camera on. Uh, get kind of your finger ready on the AEL, just the button to lock your exposure and your focus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of that tree here. So the first shot, obviously, it's, uh, it's got to be sharp. So focus on the subject, take the picture, and click uh, on your lock exposure and autofocus. Right, so I've taken the first picture, which is very important because this will be kind of your subject, uh, the couple, uh, anything you're gonna take. Uh, and just make sure the exposure is right. So looking at the picture, I've got my thumb on the lock exposure and lock focus, so everything is locked at, at this moment. So I'm happy with the exposure, I'm happy, let's say, with the position, with the smile, the eye contact or no eye contact, pretty much anything you want. If you're happy with it, then you move on and keep going. So let's have a quick look here. Yeah. So happy with it. And then... Right, okay, that's pretty much it. So I've got a good selection of picture. As you've seen, I started let's say, with my subject. Make sure I get everyone sharp and then move around. So I would always recommend that you start with your subject. So you know they're sharp and then you move on. So what I've done is kind of go like this, then move like that. And then uh, <clears throat> you obviously kind of uh, decide on your composition and uh, frame the pictures before you do it. So if I wanted to get these two trees here, I kind of get an eye indication as I'm taking the picture where I've got to um, stop the frame. You can always go a little over so you can crop it later on, which I would normally do. Uh, I always take over quite a few more pictures just in case uh, because you can go back to it later on. Um, it's not something like you can just adjust the, the <coughs> the dark, so later the light, is, if you miss the picture, it will be a nightmare to pull it together. So, uh, yeah, my recommendation is put just a little extra, and that should be it. <coughs> uh, going back to the composition part, uh, the composition for this type of picture is, I would say, is different. Don't look at uh, things in the same way. Uh, for example, the rule of third, which is something we all use as photographers, well, this doesn't always apply, and centering your subject sometimes can look very, very good, as you've seen from some of the pictures I've put, if, if you like them anyway. So, yeah, uh, now let's go back to the office and see what we're doing with these pictures. <coughs> 